Cool. We're on? Yep. All right. Hey, we haven't done a video in a long time. Well, we did one last week, but we're kind of drunk, so we didn't post it. So, uh, But tonight we're good, so we just wanted to... Uh, so many things going on in the world. What a nasty place this uh, uh, the planet is. Um, so let's first talk about, uh, yeah, let's talk about what's good. First of all, last week when we did, we were doing a video where we were going to talk about Black Lives Matter and the Pride March and how it was interrupted in that. But that's so passe and dated now that it's uh, not even worth talking about. Although I still think that uh, the Pride March should not have been... Uh, disrupted, uh, the protest should not have happened. Uh, uh, as someone who worked in the, in the Pride March, worked for Pride, Pride is about inclusion and diversity, and the Black Lives Matter uh, group had the lead, one of the lead contingents in the front of the parade, and so I think what they did was unwarranted. So, and anyway, that'll all be resolved, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll all be resolved, and uh, uh, the idea of excluding police or con police contingents from the parade is silly. Uh, I actually always am happy to see that there are police contingents from all over southern Ontario participating in the pride parade. So, and I know there are we know there are issues between the black community and the police, and the and the black community has certainly uh, 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 reason to be upset. Like it's unwar uh, well, unwarranted shootings, racial profiling. We get it. But uh, I think pride, pride to me is about inclusion and diversity and br building bridges. And uh, I'm a pretty cynical person, but pride to me goes way beyond uh, the gay community. Uh, it's, 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 to me, it represents Canada in itself. It, repre it represents Canada. It's the essence of Canada. Tolerance, diversity, uh, inclusion. And none of this is perfect. But uh, so, yeah, I thought what... Black Lives Matter group did on that Sunday was was wrong headed, and uh, I know they've they've gotten a lot of criticism, and of course, um, it all will be resolved, I'm sure, over the next year or so. Um, and yeah, so uh, but let's move on to the real serious issue, talking about uh, what's going on in the United States and Black Lives Matter and the police shootings and what happened in Dallas. And, you know, I think. <sighs> And I don't know, you know, everyone, every time this stuff happens, there's this idea of Americans need to pull together, we're all in this, and we're one country, and I, I don't see any reason for hope. The, uh, I don't see any reason for hope after what happened in Dallas. There's, so, there's such a divide between the black community and how uh, African Americans are treated in the United States uh, uh, with... There's such a divide. It's such, there's such a racial divide. It, it, they've been through. Well, there's a so you know. There's they had, they had a civil war. Then they had Reconstruction, and then everything went to pieces. And then they had the civil rights movement. And it's still today. It, they have all this incredible racism in this kind in the United States, and they still have uh, uh, police forces across the U.S. who feel they can just take out a black person and suffer no consequences. And uh, I, I just don't see any hope. I just what, and then of course there's retribution in Dallas. Uh, of course there's I, I saw that coming. You, you could see it coming. The tensions were, you know. Um, and then what happened in Dallas and just creates more hate. You know, the police officers hate black community, black community even more. So uh, I don't see any hope here. I don't see any hope. I, I wish I could, but I, I frankly. The cycle of violence will continue. I just, the United States is a violent country. It was born in violence. It perpetuates violence internally. It perpetuates violence overseas. I mean, God, you see the carnage going on in Iraq, the suicide bombings and all that in Baghdad. That was a result of American policy. A stupid invasion of Iraq. Uh, basically destabilized the whole region. We don't need to go there. We all know that. I don't, uh, yeah, I... The United States, I know it's, I do see it on the verge of a new civil war, actually. Uh, I, you know, I was reading a, couple of a bunch of stuff in the New York Times over the last few days, and people said, well, 1968, and the United States has unraveled before and come together. But, and yes, the American economy is doing well. Unemployment rates are low. The, there's lots of positives going on in the United States, but boy, this racial divide uh, is, I don't see it being 
solved. And Obama will give a speech in Dallas tomorrow, and it will all be the same old stuff. We've heard it before. And then that brings me to the issue of gun control that's totally ignored again. This guy in Dallas had access to a weapon of mass destruction. Uh, if, they had, if, you know, if the country's falling apart, at least if people do not have access to weapons of mass murder, the carnage will be less. Simple. The carnage will be less. So, uh, what can you say? Like, uh, you know, you need serious gun control in the United States of America. And you shouldn't have access to AR-15s. In Texas, you can basically display your gun openly. It's uh, incredible. Like, you, you, the gun laws in Texas are, they're none. So, uh, yeah. You need gun control in America. You need... You need gun, serious gun control. That'll lessen the carnage for the new civil war that is coming. <laughs> if you have serious gun control, then the people that are angry won't have access to all this weaponry. And uh, until you get serious gun control, how, how do you, it's hard to take, it's hard to be sympathetic, it's hard to, you know. The racial divide is something I don't know how to solve. I, I, nobody knows. It goes back to slavery, it goes back to, you know. I. I but if you, act, if you limit access to weaponry, at least you can lessen the carnage. Um, so, yeah, so that's my take on Dallas. And I, every time I see uh, all this sort of, you know, hand-wringing and God bless America and Americans will come together, I, I don't see it. I get tired of it. You get tired of it. You get tired of it on CNN. Uh, you get just so tired of it because... I don't see any hope. There's no hope. Uh, hope is just the place in Arkansas that Bill Clinton came from. You know, <laughs> that's what it is. There's no hope in America. I don't see it, frankly. It's a pretty disgusting place, a pretty violent place, and they don't seem to want to change. So. Uh, my sympathies are limited, but I don't want to make this a long video. All I'm saying is uh, one positive thing you could do, actually, as Americans, gun control, gun control, gun control. And so people who are angry don't have access to weapons of mass destruction. That ain't going to happen, of course, and no one talks about gun control. So, I mean, all right, but let me go on to the other issue, an American issue, uh, about Hillary Clinton's emails. Oh, well, don't even. Um, I think it's much ado about nothing. Yeah, the Clintons are a bit sleazy, but uh, you know what? <laughs> Given what's going on in the United States, they're worried about Hillary Clinton's emails. You know, someone, a columnist of the Financial Times uh, of London, the columnist of the Financial Times of London pointed out last week, there's a whole scandal uh, industrial complex that is developed around the Clintons. <laughs> the Clintons get away with, they just, no matter what the Clintons do, people go after them. There's a nutty right wing in the U.S. that hates the Clintons. They hated them when they were in power in the 90s. Uh, every scandal has amounted to nothing. Whitewater. And then they accused... Bill and Hillary of killing one of their close friends and aides, Vince Foster. I mean, can you believe it? That amounted to nothing. The Whitewater, Vince Foster. And of course, Monica Lewinsky amounted to nothing. And, uh, and then, of course, and then when Hillary was Secretary of State and Benghazi. All amounted to nothing. No charges, nothing. The Clintons really did nothing wrong. There are emails, so she used it personally. You know. the, the, the State Department, the classification situation in the State Department is so bizarre, what's classified, what's not classified. She used to, she, they said, you know, actually her personal email server that she used uh, was probably safer than the one in the State Department. And the whole thing is so silly. Who cares? The United States is unraveling. It's, it's a country, like I said, on the verge of a new civil war, and they worry about Hillary Clinton's emails. Clinton is the most qualified person to be president of the United States. Yeah, they're kind of, Clinton, Bill and Hillary are kind of sleazy, I get it. But in the sleaze machine that is Washington, <laughs> it's laughable. You know what I mean? Come on. These people, and of course, going up against the biggest crook in America, Donald Trump. I mean, I mean, the funny thing is, with all this stuff going on, you know, still they haven't paid enough attention to how Donald Trump bankrupted every casino in Atlantic City, late, paid, didn't pay contractors and suppliers, Trump University was a fraud. The guy's a fraud and a crook. And, you know, he calls Hillary, crooked Hillary? Come on. The whole thing is a joke. This, is, this, this election is the most bizarre election. And it's now being conducted in a year of upheaval in the United States. Uh, 
Cleve calls me a Hillary Clinton sycophant. I, I could see that, because I do like her, actually. I do feel sympathy for the Clintons. I, I do. They've just been... They're, they're hated by the... They're, they, for some reason, they, they're just targeted by the right-wing media and the nutty right-wing fringe in the U.S., and it gets a lot of play, and it's kind of silly. Uh, yeah, they play fast and loose with some laws, but, you know, American politics is sleazy and dirty, and uh, they're minor players in that. So, you know what? I think she'll be elected president. Uh, obviously, with the, with, with the op, which, you know, Donald, obviously Donald Trump opposing her, that's not an issue, and people are going to go for her, especially when the country's in crisis. And he'll, you know, Donald Trump will just inflame inflame the flames if you were so anyway that's all i want to say that's now 10 minutes i frankly just wanted to say that uh, uh yeah the u.s it's hard to be sympathetic they gotta do some concrete things gun control is one thing they could do they're not going to do it of course <laughs> but uh you know when people are angry and they have access to ar-15s and weapons of mass destruction they're going to use them and the united states is an angry nasty place but if you had proper gun control, uh, you know this 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 wouldn't happen, and it doesn't. No other country in the Western world has this kind of violence. Um, and it's funny the violence we see in the Middle East, in Baghdad, for instance, massive violence. Not even you know it's it's, it's even not even reported. It's so huge. It's uh, is perpetuated by that country. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of the U.S. and. Uh, even though they have an intelligent president uh, uh, who's also, you know, committed basically war crimes with the U.S. drone strikes in, in Asia, uh, in Central Asia, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan and in uh, Somalia and elsewhere. Um, uh, Obama is you know, probably one of the most intelligent presidents they had. And I know he's a big fan of gun control, but he's... He's going to go to Dallas tomorrow and have to give another speech and about inclusion and coming together and of course it all just and he might even mention gun control but I think he's almost given up on that so um, who knows anyways that's it Cleveland shut this off because I don't didn't want to go past it. okay blame a country eh yeah exactly. <laughs>